Hello students, welcome to our read aloud. We've been learning about famous American and famous Virginian Thomas Jefferson. We're also right in the middle of springtime. We've been learning some stuff about that. And this week we'll be thinking more about Earth Day. So today I have for you a book that brings all those things together. You know how I love connections. So here we go. This is called First Peas to the Table. Peas, like little green peas. Ooh, I'm making a connection to the veggie monster, remember how the what reaction the pea prompted when the boy had to eat the pea for dinner? Anyway, so here I see a little girl and she's going like this. Shh, like there's a secret. And this is these are pea plants, right? The pretty flower and the pea pods. She has a little packet of peas, and there's a a green puffy crown. That's kind of making me think of St. Patrick's Day or Ireland or something. Anyway, so here we go. First Piece to the Table by Susan Grigsby, illustrated by Nicole Tagel. Oh, and in on the back, there's a picture of Thomas Jefferson and a blurb. Let me show you the picture. And there's Thomas Jefferson with some friends. And there's a bowl of peas. Let's see what it says. Thomas Jefferson loved to garden. Oh, like we've read about the foods he brought to America, right? In the spring, he and his neighbors competed to see whose peas would be ready to eat first. 200 years later, Maya's class is having their own first peas to the table garden contest. Will a secret tip from Thomas Jefferson help Maya win? Oh, this sounds fun. Well, I've read it before. I know it's good. Oh, look at all the peas in the end papers. Nothing but peas. Here we go. First, peas to the table. And there's a pea pod with some peas. Oh, and a nickel for Thomas Jefferson, right? How Thomas Jefferson inspired a school garden. Okay, so we're clearly in school. And there I see the two girls talking. Every spring... Miss Garcia's class grows a different kind of garden. In February, she announced that our class was going to plant a garden like Thomas Jefferson's. No fair, I whispered to my friend Shakela. Last year, they got to plant a pizza garden. Shh, Shakela replied as Miss Garcia started saying something about a contest. A contest? What kind of a contest? I asked. A first peas to the table contest, Miss Garcia said. When Jefferson was older, he and his neighbors had one every spring. For our garden contest, you'll each be given a small spot for planting peas. She held up a bowl. The winner will be the first student who can fill this bowl with shelled peas and set them on the table to eat. Shelled means they're out of the pod, right? So they're like the actual little round things. Some kids said yuck, but Miss Garcia said that fresh peas tasted as sweet as candy and were one of Jefferson's favorite foods. If peas taste as good as candy, I'm planting a ton, Shakela said. Let the great pea race begin. I really, really wanted to win when Miss Garcia showed us the winner's crown. It was green and gold with emerald-colored pea-sized jewels all around it. Thomas Jefferson, she said, called agriculture the crown of all the sciences. Remember, agriculture is the study of plants, right, and how to support their growth, especially for farming. Be bold and experiment, Ms. Garcia said. Jefferson traded seeds with people around the world. Then he used his garden like a giant science lab to test which plants would grow best. I pulled a shiny nickel from my pocket. Jefferson was on the front and his home, Monticello, was on the back. This would be my good luck charm for winning, I decided. The next day, we made journals to record our notes in, just like Thomas Jefferson did. And just like you have, you have journals now from Senora Santiago for un semilla, una semilla for the little beans you're growing, right? You can be keeping your journal just like a scientist, just like they, they will. Okay, Thomas Jefferson's garden book was like a diary with notes about everything he planted, and we learned a lot about peas. 
Jefferson said you had to have healthy soil to grow healthy plants. Compost, made of plant waste that's rotted, adds nutrients to the soil. We took some compost from the school's bin and mixed it into the garden beds. And here's the pea life cycle sprout, seedling, blossom, pod, edible pea. Dries up and makes this a little seed and the cycle starts all over again. On Valentine's Day, so they started in so this started in February, right? Ms. Garcia brought in 10 different varieties of pea seeds. They had fancy names like emerald treasures and pearls in a pod. We each got a packet of 20 seeds of one variety, and then we had a trading party. Shakela ended up with two seeds from each variety, but I held on to the 20 I started with. Sweet victory peas. The name sounded like a winner to me. Ms. Garcia said that we could get a head start by planting some peas inside at home and then transplanting them at school in March. But I was going to get a double head start because I'd found a pea growing tip in a copy of Jefferson's garden book and I was keeping it top secret. Oh, I think that's the, her secret on the front there. She knows something from Thomas Jefferson's gardening diary that may help her. At home, I put eight tiny pea seeds into a bowl of water. What are you doing, my mother asked, making pea soup? I'll tell you if you can keep it a secret, I told her. In 1771, Jefferson wrote that he soaked his pea seeds for 24 hours before he planted them. The next day I planted my soaked seeds and placed the pots on a sunny windowsill with my good luck nickel next to them. Four times a day I checked on my plants and gave them water. But after two weeks and no signs of green, I dug up a seed. It was rotten mush from too much water. So I started all over with eight more seeds and less watering. Well, sure, four times a day watering sounds like too much. And here's her journal. Sweet Victory Peas started indoors. When she planted them, and then she was waiting for the progress, but no progress yet. She's got to start over again. Well, that's like being a real scientist, right? When you're experimenting, it's lots of hard work. Shakela started carrying home a lot of books on garden plants and some strange stuff from the school's recycling resource room. What's all this for? I asked. Your peas aren't growing yet, are they? Maybe, she smiled, or maybe not. Are yours? Maybe or maybe not, I replied. Shakela laughed. May the boldest gardener win. I ran home after school to check my peas. My little seeds had started sprouting. I made a name tag for each pot. Grow faster, I whispered to my plants. As soon as you're strong enough, I'm moving you to a real garden. Oh, and so cute. She named them all with names that start with peas. So there's Polly, Pearl, Patty, Peace, Pickles, Poppy, Princess, and Penelope. Wow, they kind of almost all sound like girls. <laughs> on March 21st, the first day of spring, we worked on our garden's main beds. Like Jefferson, we divided them into three sections for roots, fruits, and leaves. But when we got ready to mark which plants went in which sections, we got confused. Cucumbers and peppers aren't fruits, insisted Jacob. They're vegetables. So Shakela grabbed a science book and we sorted things out. Remember, Shakela directed, roots are foods that grow underground, like carrots. Leaves are leaves we eat, like lettuce. And cucumbers, peppers, and tomatoes are called fruits because they grow from a flower and have seeds inside the part that you eat. But those won't get planted until the weather warms up more. The next day, I transplanted my eight home plants into my pea patch, and I planted my last four seeds. Then I stuck in a whirligig to scare away the hungry birds. In the big garden bed, tiny ruffled lettuce leaves, leaves were coming up. I felt like a gardening champion until I walked over to Shigala's pea patch. It looked like a science fair exhibit. She had 10 different types of peas labeled like Jefferson's with numbers and some of her transplants were twice the size of mine. When I saw the different types of trellises she'd made, I remembered that peas like some kind of support. That way they stay out of the mud and get more sunshine. So Shakela is using these things because the peas are gonna go up like the little vines. So she's used this and some old tennis rackets for them to grow up 
like a vine, to get up out of the mud. In April, we went outside every day to weed the beds and record the progress of our plants. Our lettuce was growing the fastest of all. I invented a trellis for my peas with bells that played soft music in the wind. Jefferson won a gold medal for his invention of a garden plow. Maybe someday I'll win a gold medal for an invention, too. One sunny day, I saw that Shakela's plants had little white blossoms all over them. I raced to my pea patch, hoping to find some flowers on my plants. Penelope Pea had a blossom. I was so happy I did a little pea blossom dance. Shakela and I sat down and drew pea blossoms in our journals. I wish I could draw as well as you, she said. I wish that my plants were as big as yours, I replied. Thomas Jefferson almost always lost the first peas to the table contest to his neighbor, Mr. Divers, Shakela said, reminding me of the story Miss Garcia had told us, but they stayed friends. You're right, I said, giving her a hug, but I still hope my plants win. <laughs> By early May, I had lots of blossoms and six blossoms had made tiny pods. One day the sky grew dark and a big windstorm came hooting and hollering over the school. When it ended, we went outside to check on our plants. Mine were okay, but then I heard Shakela crying out, Oh no, her trellises had tumbled into a terrible tangle. It looks like you'll win now, she said. My plants are ruined. No, they're not, I said. I'll help you fix them. So here are her notes, like a scientist, day by day, recording the progress and then drawing pictures, just like you can do in your seed journal, your Diario de Semilla for Senor Santiago, right? Oh, and there's kind of the damage, but I'm sure they'll be able to fix it. On the 14th day of May, we had a celebration lunch with the first harvest of our lettuce and a bowl of fresh peas. But the peas were not mine. They were Shakela's, and she was crowned the winner of our first peas to the table contest. Congratulations, I said, you did a good job. Thanks, she said. I bet your plants will be second. They look really good. Maybe, I replied, but it feels like I've been waiting for them forever. Then I went to check on my slow poke peas. My first pod, plump and firm, was ready to be picked. I plucked it off, popped it open, and tasted a pea. It was as sweet as candy, and I'd grown it all by myself. No wonder Thomas Jefferson liked gardening so much. From one tiny seed, a whole plant could grow, full of flowers first, then giving you the sweetest peas in the whole world. Some things were worth waiting for. And here's the afterward. This is more detailed information about Jefferson and his gardening and his first piece to the table contest that he did with his friends. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed first piece of the table and I'm just going to go back because I want you guys to see I, I saved this page this is the kind of information you might be recording in your book right in your in your Diario de Semilla for Señor Santiago you're going to be drawing pictures of your bean as it sprouts as it gets a brota as it sprouts maybe it's going to get little leaves right isn't that exciting anyway I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to keep washing your hands, cover your coughs and sneezes, do some reading, do some writing, help your family around the house, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.